welcome to a very special edition of Wrestling with the Future. I'm your host, Psychic Media Angelo, joined tonight by my co-host, as I always am, Dan the Man Sebastiano, the happy haberdasher. How are you, my friend? I'm great, Angelo. Thanks for uh, looking forward to another great show. This is uh, this is different for me, so it should be very interesting. It's going to be a very good show. And joined uh, by our friend, as we often are, he is an actor, writer, producer, director, award-winning filmmaker, marvelous Mike the Movie Maker Messier. How are you, Mikey? I'm very excited tonight, Angelo. We have a guest, uh, you know, talk about, they say that pro wrestling is not fake, it's predetermined, but this gentleman will show us insights into the world at large that gives us a sense that maybe some of her own fate is he predetermined. will indeed, and before I bring our guest in, I have a couple of announcements to make, uh, some very profound. Today, I found out actually at 11 o'clock this morning, we hit the 1,790,000 download mark. We are just shy of 2 million downloads nice. across our platforms. We are now on 137 platforms worldwide, seven commercial radio stations, and two international television stations, Skynet in Canada and the BBC4 in England. So thank you to Robert Whitaker Johnson for setting us up in England. The other announcement that I have to make, and this is of special interest to our guest, because I didn't know this until actually this afternoon. Today, actually this show right now, is our 100th episode. All right. So All right. thank you, Mike Williams. You're very for welcome. For being with us. And our guest is Mike Williams. He is the... Rather enigmatic and sometimes controversial host of the Sage of Quay Radio Hour. He is the man behind sageofquay.com. He is the man some people call the affectionately known as the Paul is Dead guy. We'll talk a little about that. Not, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Not tonight. I'll bring Mike back for that one. But tonight we're going to talk about this grand illusion we call the deep state. Uh, covid and the deep state. Um, Mike, welcome to the show. Where are we with this? What What's happened to our democracy? Well, it was sold up the river a long time ago, Angelo, and uh, a lot of people are just catching up. But um, going back to the, uh, the Act of 1871, that's really when the international bankers got hold of this country. And the District of Columbia was created, and a lot of people don't realize that the District of Columbia is on sovereign land. So what that means is you might as well have a foreign country sitting on the, 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 the land or the territory of the Republic of the United States. And so it's been now a good 120 years or so that this has been underway, the, uh, really the usurping of the Constitution, of the freedoms and liberties that you know, the country was founded on. And um, we are headed toward a technocracy, which means it's going to be technology based as far as governance and uh, and the way you're going to be governed and administered to. And it's uh, I spent probably the last 10 years or so having guests come on my show and myself uh, doing research and presentations to try to get people to wake up a little bit to realize what's yeah. going on. Absolutely. Uh, we are at a, a pivotal point. Uh, I, and I, I made a prediction about 11 years ago, basically calling for ex exactly what we're going through now. I, I said it almost 11 years ago. It's on the record. People can find it if they want to find it. Uh, I said around 2020, 2021, you will not recognize the United States. It, it's certainly not the country I grew up in. It's not the country that I remember growing up in. It is entirely, entirely too politicized. If, if there's such a thing as politicizing anything, now everything's political. But it is a political, it's a political framework. It's everything is politics based. God forbid. I mean, you know what you got to do? If you want to, if you want to prove that point, go on to Facebook. You will be unfriended by some of your your longest, closest friends over a political difference of one sort or another. Just because you disagree with someone, 
Right. Now, if that's not the politi- politicization uh, of a country at its at its root cause, then I don't know what is. Um, you can't mention, God forbid, politics on Facebook. You're crucified if you take, you know, a, a consenting, you know, a dissenting opinion from the masses. I found that with my own nephew today, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, I still love him. He has the right to be wrong if he wants, but he's young. So, um, so Mike, you know, you have, uh, you have a couple of interesting theories, um, some of which I've heard previously, some of which our audience is not familiar with. Uh, where did, I'm going to say probably about, Three to five years ago, I saw a real shift in the out-and-out blatant disregard for democratic rule, really blatantly in the in the last years of the uh, Obama administration. Um, Not to say this is any better. It's certainly not. In fact, in many ways, it's worse. But how do we if we can recover from this, uh, what do we need to do? How did we get this far? And how does, I hate to bring up this word, but how does the deep state and and COVID play into all of this? Because I know it does. I'm just not sure how. So I'll shut up and and let you have at it. Well, the problem is that the controlling mechanism has been in place, Angelo, for a very, very long time. So our world is controlled by controllers, by shadow government, uh, its secret societies, and it's been like that forever. And they give the people the illusion that they have freedom, that they have liberty, that you can go about your business and do whatever it is that you think you want to go do. And because you can go shopping and, you know, you can go walk your dog or whatever, and you can go for, go on vacation, you think you're free. But the truth of the matter is the entire reality is controlled from the top of the pyramid. I call it the pyramid of power. Yeah. And at the very top, it's ruled by 13 bloodline families that rolls into what we, uh, to, the Committee of 300, I should say. The Committee of 300 is made up of 300 individuals, very powerful individuals, also bloodline related. And everything that goes on in the world, doesn't matter what country you're in, uh, is decided by this group, the Committee of 300, and then it's filtered down. And their network of uh, organizations and um, uh, like the media, as an example, the governments, the the military, it's the... um, the music industry, it's uh, its Hollywood, it's everything. E- e- they control everything. Well, and I know for sure, Mike, that it's the music industry, having yes. worked in the music industry. Yep. Um, now, we're talking, Mike, we're talking about the um, the Committee of 300. We're also speaking about, uh, of course, you know, Bilderberg, the yep. Council of Nine, the Illuminati. Yep. We're, we're, we're talking in those kinds of terms. Yes, um, yep. So, and we know factually now it was it was once mythology that this this uh, group called the Illuminati even existed, but we now know through the text and through literature and through history, quite frankly, that it is a real governing body. They have real power. They make real decisions that affect your life and my life every day some of which you know about, some of which you don't. Here's the thing I've noticed, though, Mike. They're becoming increasingly more blatant about who they are and not even trying to hide the fact that they wield this, you know, this this intense power. You mentioned a moment ago, you know, going on vacation with your family. I will tell you in the interest of full disclosure, I had to cancel my vacation with my family because I don't want to go under deep restrictions. I'm not going to go into a restaurant and sit in a plexiglass cubicle 
and eat my meal. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, how do you go into a swimming pool at a hotel and maintain six feet social distance in a pool? How do you do that if you've got a family and you've got three or four kids with you? It's right. damn near impossible. And tell that family that spent five or six grand for that vacation that those kids can't go on a ride or in an arcade or in a pool. See how long that lasts. Talk to me, my friend. Well, like I said, uh, Angelo, they control everything. And so uh, the reason why they're able to be more in our face is because of uh, decades upon decades upon decades of conditioning. And the way they go about it is it's very methodical and it's very incremental. They don't do anything uh, too soon, too fast, because they don't want to jolt people into a state of a, you know, of a awakening or at least questioning something. So they do it very slowly. And what happens is people adopt the new ways. Um, the, the power structure in the world, this is going to seem very odd to a lot of people, but they are into the occult and they are into their magic and they perform their rituals and all of this stuff. And this is very foreign to 99.9% .9 of the population. They just think that that stuff, you know, doesn't exist. The only place yeah. it exists is if I'm watching a movie, um, you know, or if it's in a story someplace, they're reading a good sure. book. But this is actually how they operate. And yeah. uh, in fact, I just did a video yesterday showing how they utilize numerology and astrology to make their decisions and when they believe is the best time to make their moves. Well, I so, can tell you, Mike, uh, and, and not to interrupt you, but I can tell you that uh, I am an expert in occultology, and I will tell you that what I'm seeing now is very much based in the occult. Yes. I'm seeing blatant symbolism, uh, not just Illuminati symbolism, but satanic symbolism, and I see it uh, in plain hiding in plain sight, if you will, uh, everywhere, virtually everywhere. It is that everywhere. concerns me on uh, on a multitude of levels, um, as it should concern most people. But there are some people, as you mentioned a moment ago, who think that it's uh, it's all just fairy tale and aren't willing to believe it. I have a man on my show who, in the interest of full disclosure, a very dear friend of mine, who also happens to work for the United States Navy. He is my co-host. He is a healthy skeptic named Dan the Man. Dan, go ahead, sure. my friend. Well, uh, like Angela said, Mike, I originally wasn't scheduled to be on this broadcast. I was asked to come on. Uh, my background is in history. And it's what I have multiple degrees in. So uh, I was asked to come on as kind of a, for lack of a better term, Angelo, correct me if I'm wrong, a counterpoint of sorts. Absolutely. And, sure. Um, I, I guess the first question I, I did re uh, follow up on a lot of your programming, what I what I could watch and what I could read. Uh, I'm curious with the, the social media age, anybody with a keyboard, a, a microphone, uh, any can, can can put information out there. And you end up with these these movements, these, uh, again, I, I'm just going to use some extreme examples. I'm not trying to criticize anybody, but like your, your flat earth societies, your, your David, David Icke with your shape-shifting governments run by shape-shifting lizard aliens. You know, you, you have, uh, they, they call it Poe's Law, where the, the idea that without, and I'm sure you, you've heard that, without uh, the understanding of where somebody's coming from, it becomes difficult to differentiate between an actual opinion and satire. And I'm wondering, how do you... In the in the age where anybody can say anything and anybody who's ever read the comments on a YouTube video can tell you that sometimes people will say things that are just out there, no no pun intended. Uh, how do you when you try and create a show and create a story, uh, craft this craft the narratives you're trying to to uh, convey to somebody? You mentioned your research and your work and all. How do you differentiate? How do you distance yourself or uh, get yourself in a different position where it's like, look, what I'm saying is based on this evidence and these pictures and then, you know, this versus the the people that are clearly just throwing out whatever they think will stick to get some views, some views. Well, Question. what I do is one of the first things I do, Dan, is I do my own work. So I don't connect myself to other groups. 
you mentioned a flat earth society, right? The flat earth society uh, is, um, is put out there in, in order to, to make a joke out of anybody who wants to talk about uh, the geocentric model, right? Uh, it was, uh, it's, I think it was Albert Einstein that said that whether, to use that as an example, geocentrism versus heliocentrism, he said he can go either way. Uh, he can make the math work either way, okay? But, but the point I'm really trying to make here is that you have to separate yourself, at least I do. I do my own thing, right? I run solo. I do a lot of research. I do a lot of deep research. I don't connect myself into anybody. I've had folks contact me and say they want to collaborate. I will not collaborate. I tell folks that when I do my research, I am presenting my findings and that's it. I'm not looking to convince anybody of anything. I'm not trying to convert anybody. That's not my interest. I do it for me. I do it for my own development, my own, uh, my own uh, way of trying to better understand the world and what the reality is all about. Um, guys like David Icke, you know, when people are in the truth community and the alternative research community, they really, you know, they get started with the Ikes and, you know, years ago it would be like Alex Jones and, and that mm -hmm. group there, right? Alex Jones, as an example, I'll give you my opinion, right, was, was put there and he was given a long runway um, in order to finally explode at the end and then take that and try to group everybody who does conspiracy research and everybody who does alternative research into, well, they're a bunch of Alex Joneses, you yeah. see? And that, that's a ploy that's used all the time. These are ploys that come out of Tavistock. And Ike, as an example, you know, David Ike has done a lot of really good work, but um, I've always said this when Ike came out with the reptilian bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I'll bet you right now, if I went to David and I had David on my show, by the way, going back about five or six years ago. But if I said to David today, if you had to take anything back, would that be it? I, I'm sure he might say, yeah, I probably shouldn't have come out with that. And so, you know, I don't I don't buy into stuff like that. It's what you what you cannot do because it is it's like a, it's an ocean full of stuff. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody thinks they're brilliant. Everybody thinks they're a genius. Everybody thinks they've have it, they have it figured out, you know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, and Mike. I, I I I have to say, uh, <laughs> if there were ever a statement you could make that I would agree with wholeheartedly, that's absolutely it. We we see it just in our own little circle in wrestling. Exactly. It's I, I tell people that the the truth community is really not a community. It's very fractured. It's, it's like a million. So. It, it's like a million piece puzzle, and. You take the pieces of the puzzle, you wait for a hurricane, and you throw it up in the air. And yeah. I, I, I pretty much stand, I, I stay away from it. Um, I do my own thing. I present my own material, my own ideas, my own research, my own findings, and that is it. And, uh, and, and that's how I do it. You know, I, I do a lot of research. I have tons and tons of books. And what I really try to do is to triangulate. So if I read something... And I said, okay, well, that seems interesting. Let me see if I could find it someplace else yeah. or if there's a, a bread trail that I can follow. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I do. You know, it's like, I know we're not going to talk about it tonight, but it's even the whole McCartney conspiracy, right? right. Um, I read the book, The Memoirs of Billy Shears, but the, I, I only use that book as a starting point. Basically, getting out of the blocks, it's a stepping stone. Beyond that, I had to do an enormous amount of research that is not in the book, outside the book, in order to validate and verify what was being said in memoirs. Mm -hmm. now, some of the stuff, you know, I said, okay, well, that piece of the book is, is probably a fictional element. These pieces are not. And I approach all of my research that way. I really do. Um, the pro we do have a problem with just this mishmash of stuff out there in the truth or community, the alternative research community. We've got aliens and moon bases, and we have uh, flat earth, and we have globe earth, and we've got geo, excuse me, geoengineering. You've got fluoride. You've got uh, all of this stuff. I mean, it's, it's all over the place. And depending upon who is presenting it, they're going to give you their beliefs, their perspectives. And you, you know, everybody's beliefs, I don't care 
how much they say that they're objective, even myself, it's going to be tainted to a certain degree by what it is that you do believe. The key is that even though you ha everybody has that, you have to be open enough and objective enough that when you are confronted with or you do come across a new set of facts that flies in the face of maybe what you thought before, as you're open you're open to changing. You're open to yeah. taking a look at something and adjusting your course or adjusting your narrative based upon new information. But I, I completely get what you're saying. I, I, I really do. And I have distanced myself from so many groups within the truth of community. And, and sometimes, you know, people think, they say, you know, um, Mike just kind of has his nose up in the air because he won't join this group or he won't come on this right. show. He won't do this and he won't do that. And it's not because I'm being a jerk. It's because well, that's actually a great segue, Mike. Um, you mentioned a couple of words there in the same sentence that are rather interesting and they are quite frankly, diametrically opposed. The word, the words alternative research and the words conspiracy. Now, when you mention the word conspiracy, amongst the general masses, you get the raised eyebrow, you get the shaking of the head, oh, here's another one of, the, another one of them. But when you say alternative research, now you're suddenly legitimized. What's the difference? Okay, Let's so, talk about the difference. Okay, so they are linked together. I prefer to use alternative research because there's research that is geared toward the mainstream narratives, mainstream history books, mainstream science, and so on. Alternative research says, well, let's take a look at other aspects or other avenues or other narratives and, and see what that's about, right? Conspiracy research is really taking a look at uh, conspiracies, conspiracies themselves, right? As an example, um, a conspiracy, let's say JFK as an example, we'll use that as an example, the JFK assassination. Uh, conspiracy researchers will spend a lot of time debating, you know, was Oswald involved in the shooting? Was he the, the, the lone shooter? Were there other shooters? And so on. The way, I, the way I look at it is, and some conspiracy researchers will say that they do do this, but this is how I kind of delineate. So you have that kind of topical discussion. That's kind of conspiracy stuff. And there's a lot of people that don't do research, exactly. but they, they still espouse conspiracy, right? They really don't have a basis for what it is they're saying or what they believe other than the fact that they watched a lot of YouTube stuff. And that does not bode well for forwarding factually based information. That, that's right. So an alternative researcher is somebody that actually says, okay, fine. We're going to talk about the JFK assassination. Now let's go dig in. And let's see if we can put the pieces together to see if Lee Harvey Oswald was one of the shooters or whether he even participated at all. Right. Right. So I interviewed two people, Oli Damagard and uh, Robert Morningstar, who are experts in the JFK assassination. Mm -hmm. They have done deep, deep researchers, uh, excuse me, deep, deep research. So I don't I don't think either Oli or Robert would would call themselves conspiracy guys. They would call themselves researchers. And they I would certainly concur alternative with that. narratives. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would absolutely concur, especially Oli Damagard. He's got he's got a pedigree and he's got credentials. Speaking of credentials, a gentleman I'm going to bring into the conversation right now, actor, writer, producer, director, author, award-winning filmmaker Mike Messia. I know you're you've been very quiet, and but I know uh, you were looking forward to Mike Williams being here. This is your opportunity, my friend. Go for it. Well, I want to give credence to a lot of what Mike is talking about here with uh, alternative research. For instance, uh, cynics might want to paint everything with the same brush, but take, for instance, the MK Ultra, you know, uh, situation. If people want to call that a conspiracy, well, it's been the government's admitted to it. So that's your sure. government. Uh, Harry Truman. John, right. You will, John and J Jane Q. Public may not realize that the government was testing citizens without their knowledge with LSD. Yeah. So if if people want to paint a, uh, a just live in their own little glass uh, houses and throw stones at anyone with different uh, information or different opinions, 
your government poison people with LSD uh, for their own sick, twisted experiments. And that's a fact that's been admitted to, and that's on the record. So people can easily put on tin foil hats and make fun of these situations. But the reality is this stuff has been proven and admitted to. Yeah. Um, Mike, I guess I want to ask you, because I guess we're not covering as much of the Paul McCartney thing as I thought we were going to, but in general, uh, things like Paul McCartney, Paul is dead, that's been around for a while. There's a whole thing about that. There's other cases. We mentioned um, Alex Jones. There's a big conspiracy going on that people think the comedian Bill Hicks was the same guy as Alex Jones. That's a huge conspiracy. But <laughs> yeah. I guess my, my question to you, Mike, is, whether these particular um, conspiracies or, or alternative news information is correct or incorrect, how should the normal citizen feel that that affects their life? How, you know what I mean? Beyond a voyeuristic being entertained by this, why should people be concerned if some of these stories are true, all of them are true, none of them are true? Why should people even be concerned? Well, because your life is being completely controlled, right? So, um, and, and let me just talk about Alex Jones for a second and Bill Hicks. <laughs> it's stuff like that. I gave an example of stuff I walk away from. Mm -hmm. I step away from stuff like that. Okay, that that type exactly. of thing doesn't interest me at all. It, it at all. Um, I want to get to Mike. Uh, I want to get to why they're doing the things that they're doing. Why are they doing these things? And how is it affecting society? And how is it affecting culture? How is it transforming and making change? That's what I care about. When people start talking about Jimi Hendrix was um, the actor um, uh, Freeman. What's the guy? Morgan What's Freeman. Morgan, Morgan Freeman? Freeman, right? Right. Morgan yeah. Freeman. I mean, people send me stuff like that. They look, look, Mike, Jimi Hendrix, he didn't die. He's Morgan Freeman. And I'm like, do me a favor, please. Don't, don't send me stuff like that, okay? <laughs> so... But when you get stuff like that, you know, you, I just shove it aside because, like I said before, you know, the conspiracy stuff, that's the conspiracy veneer that a lot of people like to play in. And that's why a lot of people don't take it seriously because it sounds as kooky as kooky can be. But, Mike, like you're saying, there are a innumerable uh, examples of where the government has involved itself in experiments and, and, and the such that are now documented and admitted to. And people, yeah. even though it's documented and admitted to, a lot of people still discard it because they just refuse to believe that anything like that could really happen, even though the people who did it are telling you, yeah, we did it and it did happen. Now, the reason why it's important is because it's like, it's, it's a, a, like a lyric from a George Harrison song. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Yeah, And so, like, for me, I, you know, I, I really want to understand this reality because, uh, you know, because when you do, it's just a better place. The, uh, you know, let's just take right now, I'm just trying to think of it a good example for you guys. Just recently, I don't know if you know this, but fluoride went to court, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. EPA was taken to court. And for the longest time, people were told, that fluoride was good for your teeth, right? The government actually cared about your teeth. They don't care about anything else in your life, but they do care about your teeth. Yeah. And so decades and decades and decades went on where they put fluoride in the water. Yeah. Now, in the recent court case, and it looks like uh, uh, the Fluoride Action Network fan is going to win the case, they proved that fluoride was lowering IQ because they were given babies formula with, with the fluoridated water yeah. by at least five points, okay? Yeah. So that means you're five IQ points less smarter than you should be. And in other research across, uh, in other parts of the world, I believe there was a, um, some research that was done out of China. They said it could be as much as 10 points lower because of fluoride. So the reason why it's important is because they're poisoning you and they're lowering your IQ and they're, they're lessening your ability to be able to comprehend, right? You're just lowering, lowering your intellect. It's the same thing with genetically modified organi uh, organisms or GMOs, right? Yeah. They knew 
They knew that GMOs were not good for humans. They knew that GMOs were not good for animals. Um, GMOs, at the very least, created new allergens, right? That's why everybody has allergies today. Sure. It is no coincidence that they took uh, what were once prescription-only allergy medications, like Claritin and so on, and they made them over-the-counter. Sure. They threw that switch when GMOs basically became pervasive, and they knew that people were going to be suffering from allergies, and GMO food had a, a big part in creating that environment. So oh, what are we going to do? Uh, well, we're not going to, start going to stop making GMO foods because there's too much uh, court, court, uh, corporatocracy that's involved in it. So what, like Monsanto, which then was bought by Bayer, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to put a Band-Aid on it and we're just going to have people swallow tons of claret and, and other allergy pills to be able to do something with the symptoms. And so, we should point out, Mike, that Monsanto spent years in court and literally billions of dollars defending themselves against something they, en they inevitably ended up losing anyway. So, um, you know, and, and I don't know if people are aware of this, but Monsanto is, you know, uh, a parent company for a lot of brand names that yes. people purchase every day and aren't aware of. Most people, here's the what bothers me. Let's just, I'll just cut to the chase. It bothers me that people are consuming goods and services every day from large corporations like this, and they don't know what they're putting in their body. Uh, they don't know the effect or damage long term, uh, even in some cases short term. Um, it concerns me that marketing of products is so vague anymore that you don't you literally don't have to list all the ingredients on any given item you can find at your local supermarket, for example. You don't have to list all the ingredients in peanut butter. Okay, yeah, it contains peanuts. We know that. But it's got a lot more stuff than peanuts. You don't well, have to list any of it. And it's not even, uh, and probably what will be one of the few moments where I think we all agree on the same idea, it's not just the ingredients, too. Sometimes it's it's the way stuff is protected. Mike, I know you, you talk a lot about the government with things like supplements is a great example where they're yeah. so uniquely regulated. I know there was a study conducted a couple of years back where they just randomly, an independent company, randomly tested. And a third, a third of everything on the shelf that marketed itself as a supplement didn't contain what it said was in the bottle. Because it didn't have to. It's you know I could say this is the weight loss pill and it's sand. You know it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I don't have to actually tell you what's in there because it's not marketed like medicine. Yeah. But sure. um, I, I I wonder if we can kind of go back to something you mentioned with the GMOs. Is that's one of those. I don't want to use the word because we were trying to. We said we we're trying to avoid it, but, but the GMOs is one of those conspiracies that comes up a lot, where that word has become dirty. But the the idea of the GMO, there's also good that can come from that. Like uh, when a, a scientist named Norman Borlaug won the Nobel Prize, they he he created they they estimated the Nobel Committee that he had saved about a billion lives. It's because he created a rice and a wheat that could grow in hot weather. So China, India, parts of Africa, they were eating because of his GMO. Now, that wasn't government control. That wasn't fluoride in the water. That was literally a group of scientists that saw hundreds of millions of people starving to death and said, unless we create some super food that can grow in sand, and well, that's Dan, a GMO. Well, remember now, this. Now, what's that, Angela? I, I call it the hot knife effect. You know, it cuts uh, going in. And the cuts coming out. Right. But I mean, it, it's uh, that I was I was just using that as an example because there's uh, times and I, I know I think Mikey kind of touched on a little bit with um, there's a lot of words and terms and uh, mo uh, things that you've covered on some of your shows where it's become such an umbrella that you have. Some of it is like you mentioned with the Paul McCartney book. Some of it's real, some of it's not. Some of it's good, some of it's not. Some of it's backed, some of it's not. You know, you, you can talk about uh, the government poisoning the air, 
And that ends up in the same conversation as chemtrails, which are two completely different ideas of what's real, what's not. So how do you, how do you approach your research and your presentations trying to fine tune and say, look, we're going to talk about the government poisoning the water. We're going to talk about fluoride, but we also have to acknowledge that this chemical and this chemical that helped with lead and that helped with chloride, you know, these, these other things are good for you. So we can't just say everything the government puts in the water is bad for you, you know, but X, Y, and Z might be. And we're so, not saying that, Dan. Well, I, I understand. I'm just using that as an extreme example. I'm trying not to, to hit on anything specific, but um, how do you, when you approach your topics, how do you look at, look, we're going to talk about this specific thing with this specific topic, but not X, Y, and Z, because we don't want to seem like we're painting everything with the same brush. Well, I actually, I mean, I, I spent, the people I have on my show are people that I have deducted are of high integrity and have done very good research. So my shows are very selective. I don't just bring anybody on and talk about it. I mean, I've had people contact me and say, hey, I want to be on your show. And, you know, I, I just know a lot about conspiracy and we could just, you know, shoot the breeze. And, and I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing that. I want, I want people to come on who have expertise in their area of research and can, can cut through all that other nonsense and get down to uh, fact-based types of discussion. Or absolutely. at least if it can't be absolutely fact-based, it uh, it's a very good theory based upon a set of facts. And then what you have to do is you have to you know, take a look at the circumstantial evidence because there is no direct evidence with a lot of this stuff. You have to understand a lot of this, most of this stuff is covered up. The government's not going to tell you all the bad stuff they're doing. It's just not. No. Okay. And so you have to, you know, you have to piece together the circumstantial evidence. And, um, you know, and, and by the way, you mentioned the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, I, I don't put a lot of stock into that, to be honest with you, because that's that stuff, Nobel Peace Prize and prizes and all that stuff. That stuff is all that stuff is all created, comes down from the top of the pyramid, comes down from the committee of 300. They reward people who are pushing their agenda, period. And so, you know, Absolutely. that's why I have a hard time with it. I mean, I've been at this so long that, uh, to be honest with you, I am. I don't put a lot of stock in a lot of the stuff that emanates out of governments, out of world organizations. You know, uh, they keep talking about, well, we had to develop GMO because we can feed starving nations. Well, you know, all right. Well, we, you know, they, they never talk about the fact that they can feed starving nations organically. They never talk about that. And the truth of the matter right. is GMO foods make somebody money. That plain and simple. It's sure. all about the money. Follow the money. You know, so uh, anyway. Um, so what I try to do is, you know, I try to have guests on who I trust are very good researchers. They have they're very credible, high level of integrity. It doesn't mean, by the way, that I agree with everything that they say. As a host, you know, my job is to is to kind of uh, facilitate the discussion and and chime in here or there. And if I do disagree on something, I might you know I'll push back a little bit and get them to respond to it. Uh, but sure, absolutely. I, mean, that's it. I, I don't have this when I do my shows, um, Dan. I don't just bring anybody on. I don't know if that's the right answer that you're looking for or what, but well, I, mean, I was saying that's, in, in that's uh, kind of what uh, I was. On. I'm sorry, Angela. Uh, go ahead. I was, was going to say, in in fairness to Mike, I will I will say that he vets his guests fairly heavily. Right. Uh, right. I, he he doesn't let just anybody come on. They they've got to have a narrative. They've got to have their information in order. Mm -hmm. They've got to be able to speak articulately on the subject matter, yeah, and I, they have to be able to wrap it up in the conclusion. Right. No, I, I, I believe that. I, I've, like I said, Mike, I've watched a lot, some of your programming in preparation for this show. I guess maybe, maybe reword my question a little bit. How much time do you spend? I don't want to say maybe disproving is not the right word, but you have to address the elephant in the room with certain topics you might have a guest on that is an expert in something that is is a legitimate conversation worth having but for every one of him there's five alex joneses about the same topic that you have to you have to acknowledge this part of your this part of the narrative is not real this part of the narrative is not real now let's talk about what you want to say which actually is if, if that maybe that clarifies it a little bit like you have to acknowledge the elephant in the room anytime you talk about alternative research yeah well 
yeah, so that's like what I call noise, right? People try to put noise in the line. So if, if, I, if it's something that I believe is a distraction or something that's trying to steer it into a, uh, off to another path, make it go left or right, basically to get us to take our, our eye off the ball, uh, then I will address it, right? And yeah. to be honest, Dan, I haven't had many guests like that. Um, what I do a lot true. with guests, especially when we have a, a very involved topic, is we will do a pre-show. So I, I just don't get on and wing it. Um, so I will schedule time with that guest and say, okay, so before we go on, let's go through your slides. Let's go through what it is, your, your discussion points. Let's talk about what it is that you're going to talk about. And then I will ask questions. I have actually had guests on. I've asked them questions and said, okay, well, you're not addressing this. So I think you need to add a slide that talks to this point. You know, this, this has to do... I was in the corporate world for 30 years, over 30 years, okay? So um, I wasn't always this guy that was running around doing alternative research and you know talking to people who are doing conspiracy research. So I like to think I have a certain level of discipline that I bring to the table with my guests to make sure that the show is structured properly and that we don't go off on on tangent, uh, tangents, and we don't talk about nonsense. You know, I, I really, really try not to. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not open to if somebody says something, I'm like, okay, that's an interesting idea. That's an interesting concept. Let's talk about that some more, or I'll have to think about that some more. You know, Here, the thing is, again, I right. have to just draw it back to, I don't subscribe to Alex Jones. It, I, I mean, I. these are people that, you kind of cut your teeth on early on, a long time ago when you first get started. And, you know, it's like a, think of a staircase, right? And so the first three stairs of this hundred step staircase is Alex Jones. And then you realize as you evolve through this process that, you know what? He is, uh, he is containment in a way. That, that's how I look at him. He's, he's controlled opposition. Yeah, I, uh, I've always looked at Alex Jones, quite frankly, Mike, as a shill. Look, he really is, to me, very much a shill. Well, cr he's forwarding, if I'm wrong. well hold on, Dan. He's, he's forwarding an agenda that he's told to forward. I believe very much that he is being controlled by the controllers. Yes. I think he's part of the control system quite frankly, and I don't put a lot of stock in what he says, especially, I will tell everyone in the interest of full disclosure, I had the opportunity to speak to him about four years ago. He did himself no favors and made himself look like an absolute ass. And I went ahead and, and aired that episode. And then I was forcibly removed to take it down, which <laughs> leads me to this point, and, and, and Mike knows where I'm going with this one because you do your own research and you answer to no one but yourself you've had some backlash from search engines like google yep. yahoo some pushback from facebook uh, youtube and we should point out and I, I i pointed out this statistic on a previous show upwards of six hundred thousand videos a day are uploaded to youtube Upwards of 200,000 a day are scrubbed for content. That's a fact. They have a technology and a mechanism in tandem with the U.S. government that can scrub, speed scrub, that's if right. you want to use that term. And that's factual. And Mike knows that I'm not bullshitting. That's factual. Mike, you want to address the, uh, the pushback you've had in censorship? From uh, Facebook, YouTube, go. You, this is your forum, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, there's just certain things you can't talk about. And uh, just, just to, to go back to Alex Jones for a second, just want to say this: what they did with the with Alex Jones is that they brought him along very methodically and incrementally. So if you take a look at what Infowars was talking about going back about a decade ago, there was some very interesting uh, information, and uh, there was. Uh, there was material and content that InfoWars was putting out that was 
good stuff, in my opinion. But then what happened was they started to shift it so that what they did was it was baiting people to come in and then they started to make the shift. And where they threw the switch and they took InfoWars and, and threw them under the bus was prior to the 2016 election with Trump, right? He got into the Trump wagon. Everything was Trump, 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 Trump. Whereas before that, they really weren't doing that. They were trying to stay neutral in a lot of their reporting and just talking about, in fact, they would say that the, the Republicans and the Democrats are two wings of the same bird. Then all of a sudden that didn't apply anymore. The point I'm making is I'm not trying to beat up on Alex Jones is that this is how controlled opposition works. They bring you in and then they try to just continue to march you along. And as they march you along, they start to change the narrative bit by bit. And they try to turn you to kind of pull you into a camp. And yeah. that's what I believe happened with InfoWars. Okay, I just want to, I want to say that. Now, as far as censorship goes, there are certain things you can't talk about. And it's, it's getting worse and worse. So if, if you're one of these people that has figured out at least to some degree, their tactics and their techniques, and you talk about it intelligently, they yank your stuff. Or what they do is they demonetize you. Or yeah. what they do is mm -hmm. they sit on your views. Okay? Yeah. I've caught YouTube a number of times ripping views out. So I'll have a video that will have 10,000 views as an example. And then I will come back the next day, that same video with 10,000 views the day before is now sitting at 8,000. They took 2,000 out. And I can prove it because they have a lag between what they show the public, which is the 8,000, the new 8,000 number, and what they show in my analytics as the content provider. And I'm still seeing 10,000. Yeah. Okay. So they do stuff like that. So they, they don't like you talking about, they don't want you talking about the uh, the country in the Middle East, okay, mm -hmm. that uh, has control over this country, okay? Sure. It's, it's, let's put it this way. They are the folks that are involved with the international banking system. Absolutely. Okay? They don't want you talking about that. They don't want you sure. talking about, I'll just say it. Hopefully this doesn't get yanked because they yanked my shows on Zionism. They don't want you talking about Zionism, period. Absolutely. They don't want you talking about that. They don't like you talking about uh, today, as uh, these days, especially with uh, the whole COVID-19 and coronavirus. They don't want you pointing out what's going on with that. You mentioned, Angelo, about the occultism. Yeah, absolutely. That whole thing is, is just wrought with occultism. With all over, place, all over the place, right? All over the place. And it's in your face. They don't want you talking about that. So when I put videos up, that I, I put one up yesterday, it's called Our Occulted Reality, and it's a 30-minute video, and I step people through how they use numerology and numbers, and they set up these events. And they are I call them 9-11 events because 9-11 yeah. is, is a very important date in the occult. It's a very important number in the occult, 9-11. Absolutely reduces to the master number 11 in numerology and the occult, and they use 9-11 for major transformational change worldwide. So what's the first thing they did, right? So I put the video up. I didn't have that video up a minute. Demonetized. Yeah. That's it. Can't talk about that because it's not good for our advertisers. That's, that's the excuse they use. And then... Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, just interrupt you for, just for a moment. Um, I'm not quite sure as i don't know the backstory on it but what was the whole rift over facebook pulling your blog well they 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 did it to me uh, three times so my blog oh, is three on times three i'm times. aware of one yeah i yeah, didn't so realize it was three three times so they um i have a sage Equate facebook page yeah. and um they about a year and a half ago or so they banned the URL. They just outright banned the URL to my blog. So 
I couldn't post anything from my blog to Facebook. So what I did was I'm like, okay, I'm just going to change the URL because I'm on Blogger. So I just create a new Sage. It used to be Sage of Quay Radio. Then it became uh, Sage of Quay Radio Hour. And then now it's Sage of Quay Blog. So I, I had to change the, the name of the blog, create a new URL in order yeah. to circumvent them. Sure. And I would be good for a period of time. And then, boom, they blocked me again, the entire URL. The third time's a charm. So what I did the third time was I said, you know what? I, I'm not I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'm not playing around with this. So um, I just keep the blog by itself. And the posts that go up on Facebook are actually the YouTube videos that are on YouTube. So now they're down to either banning YouTube on Facebook yeah. or what they, they'll probably do at some point, And I could wake up any morning. This will happen. They'll just take my entire page. And it will be gone. Yeah. So I've had well, that. Well, I'll I've tell heard... you what, Mike. We have a wrestling site. And you would think, well, how harmless is wrestling, right? Yeah. Uh, we're actually in the process of uh, buying a website. We actually have the domain. Uh, we're putting a site together. And we're, we're transferring or transposing our videos from YouTube onto our website. We own the content. Uh, we own the we own the video. It's our video, and uh, and I was I'm so concerned about the censorship issue that I've had to go that route. Yeah. Now, was it an expense? Yeah, but you know what? It's it's I think it's money well spent. Um, it concerns me when it comes to you. However, it really does concern me about you that. Yeah. For whatever reason, maybe you're getting a little too close to the truth for comfort for some people. Um, they seem to be on you. They know who you are. You've got a very visible presence. And you're not shy. And I love that about you. You're not afraid. To, you, you're, you're snickering. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a shy guy. You know, you're, you're not one of these people that's going to roll over and, and, and play nice for them. Uh, and God bless you for it. We need uh, we need more patriots like you. But what do you do? I mean, how much uh, how much can you can you take of that before you say either pardon my language, but either fuck it or I'm, I just give up? Yeah, my my attitude, Angelo, is I, I keep pushing until the wheels fall off, and I I realize. Uh, the reality of the situation is at some point, you know, I'm going to be deplatformed. You know, um, Google did it to me on my blog. I was putting up good content yeah, with regard to Zionism. Yeah. They didn't, they don't want anything to do with that. They don't want you putting anything up like that. What, what they won't turn you, they won't shut your blog down. What they do is they turned my blog off in Europe where you can't talk about that type of thing because it's a thought crime. Yeah. Right. Can't talk about it. If you think it, you're, you're, you're guilty. I want you to, th I want people to, 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 to think about what Mike just said, because it's chilling. It's utterly chilling thought crime. Think yeah. about that. Yeah. Fact that that you have should, that should make you afraid right there. Yeah, re regardless of your opinion on uh, what's offensive or what's appropriate, the fact that the police will show up at your house and arrest you because of something you said or did. Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, it's happening. It, it's oh, happening. I know it has. It, it's, it's several high-profile instances in England and Germany. The other yeah. thing that concerns me, and I want Mike Messier to jump in as well, but it concerns me, and I'm not a religious person whatsoever. I am spiritual but not religious. Uh, based upon what I do, um, it concerns me the rapid amount, uh, I mean, the rapid rate uh, of by which states and governments are shutting down churches, places of worship. Uh, I know, Mikey, you're a, a devout Christian guy, so uh, jump in here and, and talk to Mike. Well, Mike, I watched uh, one of your videos, I believe it was yesterday, and you were taking the George Floyd uh, 
murder case and kind of breaking it down in a very unique way uh, using numerology. And I, I have to admit, of all the things I've watched of you, this was probably the one that was escaping me the most um, because I just wasn't, I guess for me, as someone who, who really enjoys your content and all of the you know, alternate theory content out there, the numerology was escaping me. I just couldn't wrap my head around around it. And maybe you can go further with that here in this environment with us. The George Floyd case in particular, the, the number six was involved. You had a, a photograph of the, the Chauvin, that famous image of him with the knee on George Floyd's neck, and his badge was tilted. And I right. think you said his face was tilted, which was like, the you know, and, and I, I guess my, my question for you, Mike, to get to a question, but feel free to elaborate. Was this case, are you, are you possibly saying, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, I'm just asking, are you possibly saying that this was predetermined, pre-rigged, in the stars, under the spell of Satan, in the pyramid, or, 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 or what am I missing, or what am I getting, I guess? Okay, so as um, Angelo and I were, were saying before, Mike, and it's very difficult for a lot of folks to really get their heads wrapped around this, but the ruling elite are heavily, heavily into the occult. They, many in the pyramid, especially within the ranks of the Illuminati, are um, disciples of uh, Crowley's religion, Thelema. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, yep. so what we're dealing with is Luciferianism, and the darker side or the darker aspect of Luciferianism is Satanism. Now, what goes along with all of this occultism is, uh, is mysticism. It goes back to the ancient uh, Egyptian mysteries. Um, it has to do with astrology. It has to do with numbers. Numbers are very, very important in the occult. And of course, they don't want people knowing this. And that's part of the reason why when I put my videos up on this stuff, I get demonetized within a minute. They just and then the views just sit there. Like if you, I did that that uh, video yesterday, and I think it's hanging at around maybe three or thirty five hundred or four thousand views. That's it. It just got s sat on. So to answer your question, what happens is they are looking to push the world in a certain direction, and this has been going on for a very very long time, but it has been hot and heavy. For the last 60 to 70 years, right after World War II, I would say that there has been a huge international infrastructure that was put in place. And people who doubt this, I say, well, look, you have international courts, you have the WHO, you have the IMF, you have the United Nations. Yep. I mean, what do you think these organizations, uh, what do you think they do? What do you think these entities do? Who do you think runs them? You know, and people and should people should realize, Mike, and I, I think, you know, because of people like you and I uh, making them aware, people should realize and be aware that all of these organizations are not autonomous. They work in tandem with one another. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And people Angela. need to be aware of that. They they are one group. They're they're like political parties. You can call the. You know, Democrats and Republicans, two separate parties, but they're one party with two names. That's that two and, wings and that's of the same essentially what we're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when and, we talk about, you know, World Health, World Health Organization, the United Nations, uh, you know, all of these, they're, they're one group. Let's be real clear banking. about it. Yeah, absolutely. And so to, to answer Mike's question, so what's happening, Mike, is they are pushing in a direction. They, they, this is what they want. They want one world government, which is called the New World Order. Yeah. And they want one world religion. Those are the two things they're pushing. In the memoirs of Billy Shears, Billy tells us, because Billy sits in the Illuminati, that the Illuminati declared war on Christianity back in 1962. That's why Christians have been having one heck of a time over the last... 60 years with what's going on with their faith. It's constantly under attack. Yeah. They have infiltrated the churches. They have especially infiltrated the evangelical churches. The Roman church has been infiltrated. 
this is this has been all has been going on for like the church and so on that's been going on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years sure but the actual subversion of our country really it, this is my personal view okay it really got started in the early 1900s with the passing of the federal reserve act when they handed the money over to a private bank thank you okay thank you for saying that our a government our constitution says that we uh, the people, the, the uh, via the, the the treasury, are supposed to create our own money. If you create your own money, you can't have debt because you can't owe yourself money. If you right. need money, you just print it. But what they did was, uh, back during the uh, the early 1900s, I believe it was 1911, when the Federal Reserve Act was created under Woodrow Wilson's watch, that was it. You are now an indentured servant. You are a debt slave because they're going to charge you interest and the taxes that we pay only go toward the interest on the debt. You yeah. never will. You, we will never be able to pay the principal, which we means should also point out that Woodrow Wilson uh, from New Jersey was a 33rd degree Mason. Yeah, uh, a, a very high ranking Mason and was up to his eyeballs uh, in this type of nefarious activity. He was not a squeaky clean guy as history likes to make him out. Let's be real clear about it. No, no, he, he, ahead, was, Mike, not, he was not squeaky clean. In fact, he was rather weak spined uh, when we look back at him in history. Yeah. Um, so, so Mike, to go back to what you, to, to your question, because I really want to answer your question is they, they are in the process. And I say, they were talking about, I'll call them the controllers, the conspirators of, eviscerating our rights. That's what they're doing. So little by little, what they're doing, they're saying, hey, you know what? Uh, we'll give you more safety, but you're going to have to give up some freedom. We'll give you more safety, but you're going to have to give up some rights. And so what they do is they, they constantly go through a process of inflicting fear into people, right? So people become fearful. They're like, oh my God, you know, I don't want to die. I don't want to get sick. I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. Don't worry about it. We've got the answer. It's what it's, it's referred to as problem reaction solution. They create the problem. They, then the reaction happens. And we'll talk about that with George Floyd and with uh, COVID in a moment. Yeah. And then they present the solution. That's what they do. Yeah. And, and by doing that, Mike, what they're doing is they are very methodically and incrementally, but it is speeding up now, like Angelo said. I mean, it's, they're really starting to take off now. They have conditioned people to accept a new reality a new state of being, one where you don't have the freedoms you used to have. You don't have the movement you used to have. You don't have the rights you used to have. Anytime they pass a law, an act, a regulation, we have less freedom. Plain and simple, that's just how it works. They're always taking something away from us. So with the George Floyd, we'll talk about George Floyd. So with the numbers, I mentioned 9-11, just, you have to just, I guess take this at face value because this could be an entire show. 9-11 is a very, very important date in the occult. Many, many different uh, events have taken place over history on September 11th. And in my presentation that I did yesterday, I gave some key dates in the 20th century alone where key things that happened, right? George Bush Sr., George H.W. Bush, gave his New World Order speech Absolutely. to the country on September 11th, 1991, which happened to be- I watched it today. Yep. I watched it today. Yep. Actually. And 11 years later, because 11 is a master number in numerology and yep. in the occult, the Twin Towers come down on September yep. 11th, 2001, to the day, 11 years Let's later. Let's be clear too, the Twin Towers looked like the number 11. It was, it was representative of the number 11. Exactly. So they take these 9-11, I call them 9-11 events, whenever they want to make major, major change, when they really, really want to move the ball forward. In other words, they really want to have, they don't want incremental change. They need to push something just like they want to shove it forward. That's what happened with 9-11-2001. The entire world was stunned by it. And so when that happened, when everybody was stunned, everybody was, what, what happened? But this is unbelievable. How are we going to be protected? We have got to go get these guys. We've got to go stop this. And they're like, okay, we've got it. And then the war, the war on terror began. And 
back then, I believe it was Dick Cheney uh, had said that uh, the war on terror can can go on for 20 years. He, he gave some some, you know, ridiculously long period of time. And um, but that was their way of saying that we're going to live with this fear for for quite a while. And you're going to have to rely on us and depend on us to protect you. So, you know, just just do what we tell you to do and listen to what we have to say. And everything's going to be OK. You know, give up some liberties in exchange for your safety. Patriot Act and, and all that stuff. But the Patriot Act was already drawn up way before 9-11-2001 ever took place. It was a PNAC document that, that was written before uh, 9-11. Yeah. So then, you know, we, we could see that how the world has changed since since 2001, since 9-11-2001. Everything's changed. And they threw more, more boogeymen at us, right? They, they said, well, you know, first it was Al-Qaeda, then Al-Qaeda just went into the memory hall. Then it was ISIS, and then ISIS went into the memory hall. This is what they do. They create these boogeymen because they always need one. They play it out for a while, and then all of a sudden it just mysteriously disappears. They never talk about it again, and people just kind of forget about it. I mean, what did happen to ISIS with all of their black uniforms and their black Toyota trucks and their Facebook page, and they were selling DVDs and all that stuff? How does that happen, right? Nobody right. ever asks, how does that happen? How are they able to have merch, right? On Amazon yeah. or Facebook or on their website or whatever. How does how is Remarkable, that Remarkable, isn't it, Mike? The fact, yeah. that, the fact that ISIS had a Twitter page. Exactly. I they mean, think Twitter about it. They're actively recruiting on Facebook. Yeah. Think, think about it. So so, think, so when think, you think of when you put it in those terms, you have to come to the conclusion, if you're a clear thinking person, a critical thinker, hey, something's going on here. You're allowing this stuff to, to, to go on. You're allowing this stuff to exist. Why is that? It's because they have an agenda. So... If we fast forward to um, to the whole thing with George Floyd, you know, well, in fact, before I get to George Floyd, let me talk about coronavirus and COVID-19. When they came out with coronavirus and COVID-19, I think it was late March, I put a video up and I said, it's a hoax. And people were like, you're crazy. It's a ho What do you mean it's a hoax? Oh, you know, you. in fact, I think Vince put a, um, a video up, I know he did, of an interview that he and I did and there was one comment where the person said, that guy, Mike Williams, he's dangerous. He's a very dangerous person saying these things are not real and it's a hoax and all that stuff and blah, blah, yeah, blah. I saw that, Mike. What I said was coronavirus was, it, it's just you, it's just a virus. And we have viruses all the time. We've had viruses ever sure. since day one, right? And I said, what they did was they took something that always exists and they made it larger than life. This way, they have plausible deniability. They can always say, sure. well, yeah, it they gave it exist. a name. They gave it they, a name. Exactly. Exactly. They gave it a name. And they and they just blew it up and make it larger than life. Uh, so what I did was, Mike, th think about something. We're just getting now here in, in New Jersey. I can speak for New Jersey. We're just now entering what they were calling phase three, which that whole phase thing bothers me, too. Yeah. But we're getting into phase three now. By September, supposedly, everything is supposed to be open at full capacity again. What happens, Mike, in October and November? Flu season. Right. Okay. What right. happens then? All over again or what? Well, that, that's a possibility, right? So they were saying that they kept telling us a second wave was going to happen. But let me just explain to, to Mike, because I want to answer his question, because it's a really yes, good please. question. I know a lot of people have struggle with this. Yeah. So I'm looking at this, and I said, well, you know, coronavirus. I took a look at coronavirus. And um, let me just take a look at my chart here real quick so that um, I get the, uh, the numbers right. Okay, so I looked at coronavirus. I ran it through my numerology calculator, and it has numerology of 11. So I know that 11 is a Our master three. number. I'm sorry, let me interject real quick with a question. Is are you saying the word coronavirus yes. has the numerology or or the numbers of like fatalities and whatnot? No. You're saying physically the word coronavirus. Right. Yeah. So okay. right. numerology takes the words, takes the, the the alphabet, the letters, converts it to numerology. Coronavirus has numerology of eleven. Eleven is a master number in the occult and Freemasonry. Very powerful number. Then they came out with, they changed it. They said, all of a sudden, COVID-19 popped up. Remember? 
First it was coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. And then all of a sudden we got this new word, COVID-19. Right. Right. So then I ran COVID-19 and it was nine. And I said, okay, here we go. We have a 9-11 event. Right. So we have 9-11 exactly. again. And so what they're doing now is they are inflicting fear. And they're telling people you have an invisible enemy. And even people who don't have symptoms could be deadly to you. So avoid everybody. Yeah. Avoid everything. Six feet, all that stuff. And I, you know, I explained the six feet in my video also. That gets even crazier. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So so what's <laughs> happened is is you know, it's a 9-11 event oh. and they're trying to alter people's lives they, they took your, your the, the routine you had in your life right your everyday life and now they're calling it the new normal the new normal oh, stop right there stop right there if i hear the term social distancing and the new normal one more time yeah i'm going to slap somebody i am going to bitch slap somebody i want to say first of all by definition, normal is normal. There is no new normal. Let's be real clear about it. Uh, the new normal is the imposition of someone else's will on our life. Let's be real clear about that. Yeah. Yep. Social distancing. Mike Williams, I want to tell you something. Uh, when I heard that term social distancing, I thought to myself, where have I heard that before? I heard that before. Where was it? Then I went back because I am a history buff. I went back and I looked. Nazi Germany. Adolf Hitler instructed the Aryan nation to maintain a social distance from the dirty Jews. Okay. I'm not making that up. That's factual. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that, Angelo. I mean, I'm, I'm not questioning it. And it's also yeah. it was also introduced in a movie. I forgot the name of the movie going back a few years ago where they talked about social distancing. That's a whole different other topic. That's predictive programming where they're, yeah. they're basically softening us up, conditioning us for, you know, things that are going to come. So, right. so what they did, Mike, is, is to um, get people very, very afraid. They want to push the vaccines. I mean, that's that's one of the things that they right. right. So right, I mean, Bill Gates jumped out of the closet in about you know two seconds after this whole thing, saying, "Hey, we're working on it. We're going to have a we're going to have a vaccine out very soon." You know, we're not really sure we can really test it, but you know, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be good. Mm -hmm. And so right, we had that that happened, and and then they had you wearing masks. Oh, masks oh, masks are used in rituals, and they have been used for. Since the beginning Century. of time, yeah, Century. since the beginning of time and religious yeah. ceremonies, occult, occult rituals, a mask is a sign of quiet. Okay, quiet. Yeah. It's, it's silence. And that's what the mask is for. So they have people wearing the masks. It's, and I, again, I know it's like a broken record. It sounds crazy to people when I say stuff like this, but this is what they do. These mm -hmm. people are occultists and they are magicians and they're in a priesthood and this is what they do. And they've been doing this a long, long time. So anyway, so that's COVID-19. So I'm look. so I made the announcement. I said, guys, not real. It's a hoax. And guess what? More and more people now, we're now in June. It's three months later. And people are saying, you know what? I don't think this thing is real. Or I think it's completely blown out of proportion. I think this thing might be a scam. I'm tired of wearing a mask, okay? This is what we're getting now. And they can't get yeah. their numbers up because the numbers are just not there. So they have to make them up. They have to tell us they're getting numbers from modeling. They're pulling mm -hmm. numbers out of their ass. Exactly. They're, they're, they, they, they are uh, uh, fudging birth, uh, death certificates. That came out uh, weeks ago. Oh, where, God, yeah. You know, the, the word had come down to the funeral homes and, and, to, the, and to hospice and, and to the hospitals that – Hey, you know what? Um, if there's even a remote possibility that this person had "quote unquote" COVID or coronavirus, mark the cause of death as coronavirus. COVID. Exactly. Even though the person had heart disease for ten years and they're, you know, basically time was up. Now, you know what? He didn't die from heart disease. He had COVID nineteen. The whole thing is ludicrous. 
So if they did the same thing with um, – they like to play the race card. That's like their ace in the hole, right? So whenever they have right. problems, they, got, they have to stir up the pot with, with, you know, with racism. And so yeah, I took a look at the whole George Floyd deal. And when I did George Floyd, um, I – let me just go to George Floyd first. Okay, so the name George Floyd has numerology of 11. And then they told us that the cop – uh, Derek Chauvin. He, yeah, yeah. He kneeled on his knee, was on George Floyd for eight minutes and 46 seconds. So I'm thinking, well, you know, why are they telling us eight minutes and 46 seconds? That's kind of very strange. They have an exact time like that. Exactly. So when, so when you add eight plus four is 12 plus six is 18. One plus eight equals nine. So George Floyd is 11, 846 is nine. George Floyd is another 9-11 event. And so what they did was, you know, they pushed the whole coronavirus COVID-19 9-11 event. And then right on top of that, to really try to push the ball forward, they did the whole George Floyd deal. Now, I'm not saying George Floyd didn't die. I want to be very clear about that. I have no idea. I always stay away from whether somebody died or not. I wasn't there. I'm not the coroner. Whether he died or not, and I'm not trying to sound cold here, is irrelevant because what's relevant is what they were able to do after the event. What happened afterwards? Problem? George Floyd, knee on his neck, dies. Reaction? People go nuts. Mm -hmm. Solution, right? So the solution, well, first he was saying defund police, right? <laughs> yeah, that's one of their solutions. Sure. But I think where they're going with the solution is they want to try to implement a more technology based policing, facial recognition, so, uh, social credit scores. They've got that going on in China right now. Yeah. So if you don't go along, if you don't uh, cooperate or if you're a little defiant and you're not rowing the boat in the direction we want you to row, you're not going to get as many social credits. And so that's that's going to result in you not being able to do certain things. You may not be able to travel. You may not be able to get bank loans and stuff like that. I know it sounds crazy, but well, trust okay. me, this is going right. on in China right now. So it could, it could with going what you said, if, if the powers that be were to say, hey, everybody, because the police, human beings as police have given you so much trouble, we're going to implement this new technology, uh, facial recognition uh, for drivers. So if you want to get a driver's license, instead of filling out a bunch of papers, hey, just stick your face into this machine and we'll scan your face. And then yeah. if we pull you over, we'll scan your face somehow. And maybe they're putting uh, information into your brain with the face scan. Uh, Mike, something it, like that. it's literally RoboCop. Well, that's this is this is interesting stuff because it's literally when, RoboCop. Well, when you talk about, for instance, uh, if you have a phone and you have a certain type of smartphone, do you use a password or do you use a thumbprint? Right. And if if you're giving your thumbprint to your phone, who is your thumbprint going to besides who you want it to go to? Is your phone taking that information and giving it to somewhere else? We hear about things like. Um, uh, people getting their identity stolen. Well, guess what? We're all playing the game of banks online, banks on our phone, uh, social security numbers through the internet. We're all playing Russian roulette with our personal identification all the time, yeah. so much so that it's become habit. We don't challenge it anymore. No. I mean, you know, back exactly. in my... My parents. That's the conditioning, Mike. That's the conditioning I was talking right. about. People accept this now, right? They accept, oh, this is just the way it works, and they sell it to you as convenience, security, safety, convenience. I was watching one video a few months ago where there was a company out in Europe where they were inserting their employees, it was voluntary, with a chip, and they were saying how wonderful it was because they can now just put their hand up like this, and they have access to rooms which would have keypad locks on it. They can actually go to the vending machine and go get you know, a bag of M&Ms and a Coke by, you know, the, the machine, uh, the vending machine reading the chip in their hand mm -hmm. and then billing their bank account. It's, yeah. It's crazy. And you would think like, 
who in God's name would do that, right? And you're, they're interviewing the people on this video, and like, this is the greatest thing since the light bulb, you know? I don't have to carry my wallet around anymore. I don't have to turn a doorknob. You know, it's, it's just unbelievable what people will accept. Well, what happens when that chip monitors where you go on vacation? Or if, uh, hey, if this guy is cheating on his wife, well, the chip will tell us where he was, yeah. what room he was in. Yeah. It will I monitor was, every aspect of your right life, there. and that's what their intention is. I have a good story for you real quick uh, along ahead. those lines. Sure. So I, got an e I got an email about a week ago. It's from Google, right? <laughs> Google says, hey, Mike, uh, hey, just thought you might want to see your statistics. And it starts breaking down what towns I visited. It breaks down where I ate, the restaurants I ate at, Damn. how many miles I drove, and how many miles I walked. And I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. In fact, I still have it. I kept the email because I'm going, I'm going to do a video on it, put it up, because people won't <laughs> believe this stuff, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. So this is the technology that they have. So, what you know, I'm, I'm not really savvy with the phone. So my daughter's like, Dad, turn off the, uh, you know, the, the, the tracking bit, bit that you have there. Yeah, right? you the could, GPS. You just, yeah, yeah, you could turn that stuff off, right? I'm like, okay, so I did that. But... There's a lot of people, probably most people, who have that on. And not only do they have it on, but even when they get that report like I got, they don't care. They don't care that some, some AI knows everywhere they've been, yeah. where they drove, how many miles, even down to walking, which means it's able to calculate the pace in which you're moving, right? So yeah. it's like... Well, he's not moving fast enough, so Mike must be walking. Put that in the walking bucket, right? Well, Mike, you know, uh, along those lines, there are actually uh, Google Store apps that you can download to your phone, which will actually tell you, based on the geolocation of your phone, how many steps you took. Yeah, <laughs> it will. It, it can. I'm not making this shit up. I know you're not. I know. Along those lines, just this week, as a matter of fact, Google announced that it will, by default, disable all location tracking, all geolocation tracking. Allegedly, right? Oh, allegedly, they just did it. Yeah. That they, they no, well, when did they say they would do that, Angelo? Uh, when did well, they say this? They, they said that it will probably be implemented in the next three weeks. Now, was it was it Apple or Google where it, they, they discovered that the phone was still tracking you even if you had turned off the GPS? That was Apple. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I have a problem with Apple anyway because I think they're part of this giant machine. Well, oh, absolutely. I, I know anybody anybody that's ever used a smartphone, you, you know, how many times a, a week am I talking to my wife? And I open my smartphone, and the very first ad I see on Amazon or Facebook is for what I was just talking about. Right. Like, well, that's no, tell, well, tell me you're not eavesdropping. Well, that that is that is predictive programming. Yeah. Voice I'm, recognition, the voice recognition yeah. software where your phone is eavesdropping or your computer is eavesdropping in your personal right. conversations. Well, I'll Am give you one better. Amazon. I'll give you one better. This happened uh, this week, as a matter of fact. I picked up my phone, and my camera on my phone literally took three pictures of me without me ever having to touch the button yeah there you go what Remarkable. So, I mean, that was that was something with the echoes Amazon. and it's, and it's me looking at my phone going what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> basically literally uh mike uh, mikey messier mentioned uh a few moments ago uh derek chauvin the uh, uh alleged police officer yeah uh involved in the George Floyd case. I, in the interest of full disclosure, I sent you, and I'm not taking a position either way, I just thought it was rather interesting, that the, uh, the, this police officer looks remarkably like a television actor named Benjamin Bradley, Ben Bradley, who was the, uh, the former host of a show called Cash Cab. If you look at this photo and you look at Ben Bradley, I mean, Ben Bailey, I'm sorry, Ben, ben Bailey. Ben Bailey, yeah. Yeah. They look remarkably, remarkably alike. 
Even if you zoom in on the eyebrow, it's the same exact arch. It's the same haircut. What do you make of that? Is this deep state operations or, or is this some massive psyop? Uh, what are we dealing with here? Well, I, or is it just, just a coincidence? Yeah, I'll start or with Or is he this. really Billy Shears? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think he's Billy, but one never knows with latex. Um, exactly. I, I, I will say this. The, the deep state does use crisis actors uh, in, in these events. But I also believe, and I have said this on a number of shows, that I do not discount the fact that people actually die in these events. And because uh, I have people in the cons you know, conspiracy and the alternative research community who are convinced you know, everybody's a crisis actor and nobody actually dies and all this stuff. And I say, hey, look, right. they send your kids to war, don't they? Yeah. Right. Do kids die do, you know, in, in war? They absolutely do. So they don't lose any sleep over death. So that that's the first thing. That's one of the reasons why I won't jump into the nobody dies. They're all crisis actors. Now, I did take a look, uh, Angelo, because you did send me the email and um, I have concluded that Ben Bailey and um, Derek Chauvin are not the same people. And even though they do have uh, some they have similarities, they certainly do. But if you take a look at, and, and I've learned all this from doing all of my forensics with uh, taking a look at uh, biological Paul McCartney and Billy, yeah. the noses are different, but most importantly, the ears are different. Yeah. Um, Derek Chauvin has very, very peculiar ears where they almost dog, dog ear out. And he has, a, he has very, yeah. very defined ridging in his outer ear and his inner ear, which you do not see with Ben Bailey. Yeah. So this is one of the things um, that if we go back to what Dan was saying before, mm -hmm. right, about all of this conspiracy stuff where people do this stuff and then they just jump online and YouTube and they load all this stuff up and poor Ben Bailey, you know, I don't know. He's probably sitting there going. He was the host this. of Cash Cab. Cash yeah. Cab. Yes. Would, yeah. He would do yeah. a trivia show. It's a fun show, actually. Yeah, yeah. He would do yeah, and we should point out that that Ben Bailey is uh, legitimately an actor and comedian, yeah, yeah. Uh, who bears a striking, striking resemblance uh, to Derek Chauvin. Um, and as I said, uh, and as I will reiterate, I'm taking no position either way. I sent Mike the photo in in the interest of full disclosure, uh, just for comparative purposes. Um, we can, you know, and Mike knows in his Paul is Dead research, I'll tell you what, there's no question in my mind that uh, that Billy Shears or Billy Campbell or whatever you want to call him bears a striking resemblance to Paul McCartney, but there are some very visible differences. Right. His height, his bone structure, but if you see him with the other Beatles, he certainly looks like one of the Beatles. So uh, it's all about it's all about putting it in context, right? So exactly that's what it is, putting it in context. But I, I can tell you one of the things that you should always look for for anybody who's trying to see, like you know, do they have crisis actors or whatnot? Ears, ears are very very difficult uh, to camouflage, and uh, you know we have ears are very distinct. It's almost like you know, like fingerprints. Take a look at the ears. I mean, noses. They, you know, obviously they can do uh, uh, plastic surgery, but not in this time span. In other words, you know, yeah. uh, right. So I, I took a look at the uh, the pictures. I really did. I took some time today, Angelo, and uh, it, it is not the same person. Is there right. a strong resemblance? Yeah, there is. They, they, you know, I can see where people might at glance uh, say, oh, wow, you know, is, is that that guy? But when you take a closer look, uh, they are not the same person. And I, I yeah. even saw some stuff on Twitter and some folks sent me some stuff where they said, hey, the guy in the mug shot's not the guy that had the uniform on. And I took a look at that also when I said, yes, he is. Because when you look at the mug shot, when you look at the profile, I have a profile of uh, Derek Chauvin. Um, and you can see his nose, you know, very clearly the shape of his nose. And there's a mug yep. shot of, of him, you know, in the orange jumpsuit. And it, it is the same nose. And it is yeah. the same ears. So it, it is the guy in the jumpsuit. And, uh, but he is not... The act of Ben Bailey. So Ben, yeah, we should also point out that, and thank me. <laughs> we, we should also point out that Ben Bailey has a, a narrow, thinner nose. Well, let Just, me uh, 
compared jump in to, here uh, real to quick Derek too. Go ahead, um, Dan. It's it's important to note that the the combination of chromosomes that make up the human body isn't infinite. The, once you start talking about a global population in the billions, it is mathematically impossible that there is not at least two or three people out there in the world that look damn near identical to you. I go and through that every week it, because people think even to this day that I'm Vince Russo. Jesus. Really? Well, let me. Let me, I, let me I, I got, I've been I got mistaken nothing for you on that one, bro. I, really, I literally have been mistaken for Vince many times. Nothing, nothing, nothing for you there, bro. You're better looking than Vince. <laughs> Thank you. You know, yeah. bro, <laughs> bro. Now, one, now, one, let me uh, love you, bro. <laughs> let, let Let me ask you something. Um, you, you had a, a put out a lot there. When you start look, looking at things like numbers and coincidences and stuff like that, you know, you, you mentioned, for example, the time. Uh, yeah. the, you can watch the video and time it. There, the, the, it's not like that number was random. That is exactly how long his knee was on was on Floyd's neck. Like, are, are you implying that that was scripted to specifically be that, that exact amount of time? Absolutely, it was scripted. It's it's not look it's not coincidence Dan it's we have to get out of the land of coincidence it, it's it's <laughs> there's so much conspiracy around us that is absolutely mind boggling now the other thing you should know is they changed 846 to 746 right so a different number came out later and in my video that I did the other day I said always play or work with the first number they give you the the, the first set of data that they give you because they have a knack. And this is what they do of altering numbers afterwards. And this is done to throw people off the path. So, so in, go ahead. Go I'm ahead. sorry. In, in, in order for that to be true, that means you're, you're uh, how do you time that to, to fractions of a second where it's not like you're counting three Mississippi, four Mississippi in your head. Is the, is the video fake? Is the person filming it in on it too? Is there some kind of off-camera signal? I mean, when you get to a specific fractions of a second time, how is that part of it? How does that work? Mike, well, first of all, before you ahead, answer that ahead, question, Mike, I, I want to address that because it's really important. A video surfaced yesterday, as a matter of fact, of an alternate camera view where – a police officer was told to stand back. A, a legitimate uniformed police officer was told to stand back while this other group of police officers responded to the George Floyd incident. It's a, a completely different camera. It's a mounted camera up on a building that captured everything that the street level camera captured. And I will tell you, I've seen both videos. They are different. There's no question they are different videos. I'm not saying one way or the other that one was hoaxed and one wasn't. I will just tell you that they are different. Go ahead, Mike, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, going back to Dan's question, because this is a good question. People ask, you know, well, you know, what are you saying that, you know, that they're making these numbers up? First of all, who timed it? OK, that, that's the first thing. The second thing is, even if it was eight minutes and 40 seconds or eight minutes and 50 seconds, the media who was complicit in this releases eight minutes and 46 seconds. Because they know 846 is nine. I know it sounds crazy, Dan, and it's something, it's very difficult to get your head wrapped around, but that's how it works. These events are orchestrated. These events are engineered. There's nothing natural about them. There's nothing organic about them. When they stir the pot like this, okay, this is, this is very indicative of deep state planning and deep state execution to put things into play. And look what happened right afterwards. Look what happened. A, a total mess, a total mess, rioting, uh, burning down businesses, people getting hurt, okay? So that's the thing. You know, well, they're going to give you, they control the media. They control the narrative. I don't, you don't, right? And the person filming it, I don't know who filmed it. 
How was the person? Was it was it a police uh, cam? I don't know. Was it somebody that? How how was that person allowed to get that close to film that entire event at that angle? How 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 did that happen? They would have had to have roped off everybody from the area except this one person who they said, "Hey, come on in. You want to film this?" Well, the video I saw was a 17-year-old girl who was screaming at the police to stop killing the guy. Uh, at least that's how it appeared to me. And uh, Yeah, but this is the thing, right? This is the thing. And I know it sounds crazy, but they have all these people paging in, paging out. You don't even know who the 17-year-old girl is. Yeah. Right. She might be legit. She might not be legit. Okay? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, but the thing is, the thing is the time. Okay, George Floyd equaling 11 and the 846, very, very specific, 846, totaling to 9, 911. Go back to COVID-19 and coronavirus, 911. You know, you, we, we, can, we, can take, we can take a position that says, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to brush all this stuff off because I, I don't know about that stuff. But when you start seeing patterns of numbers, and I, I, you know, I study this stuff, there are patterns to what they do, there's patterns to their numbers, that's my deduction. So as soon as I saw the George Floyd event and I saw that it was 9-11, I said to myself, okay, all hell's going to break loose. All Mike, what's the end game? Loose. What's the end game? Let, let's say uh, so they much. forward their agenda, they get their way. What's the end game? So they, they have a, uh, a population full of slaves that serve whom and for what purpose? Well, if we take a look at the Georgia Guidestones, I mean, not to bring that into play, but. Well, I actually, you know, funny you should say that because uh, I actually uh, put a picture up on my Facebook page yeah. of the Georgia Guidestones. And uh, I think I may have sent the, the photo to you as well. Yeah, and I've seen them plenty of times. I mean, number one is maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Yeah. Uh, the second one is, I'm reading here, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity, unite humanity with a living new language, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Five is protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Six is let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Useless officials. Officials, yeah. Eight. Balance personal rights with social duties, social justice, right? We've seen all that. Mm. Prize truth, beauty, yeah. love, seeking harmony with the infinite, the infinite being creation. And 10, be not a cancer on earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. So, you know, there's lots of people who've done research and said that there's a depopulation agenda in place. Yeah. You know, um, they call it a slow kill. Well, that kill. narrative has been forwarded for for many years, uh, Mike, and so uh, you we can't discount that. You know, nobody knows for sure uh, who paid for the Georgia Guidestones, uh, why they were placed in the middle of literally nowhere. Yeah. Um, we should also point out that they have been defaced innumerable times uh, and are quickly cleaned up. And, by the way, the state of Georgia is paying for it. Yeah. So, you know, surmise your own conclusion, but, you know, at, the state is at least in on it in some capacity. But for what purpose? We, I don't know. I'll well, be what, honest with you. Well, what plays into it, uh, an, an overarching um, construct, Angelo, is Agenda 21. OK, so Agenda 21 is all about moving the population into controlled areas of inhabitation. Right. Right. And some people think that um, the new term is 2030. But I've explained in a video that 2030 did not replace Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the agenda for the 21st century. Yeah. When, and it kicked off with 9-11. That was kicking off the 21st century with the 9-11 event. 2030 is a marker. It is a point on the a project line, if you will, the project plan of Agenda 21. Yeah. So what they'll do is they will have um, checkpoints 2030, 2040, 2050, until they get to the 22nd 
century. And what I've explained to folks now, 20, 50, 30 years from now, I won't be here. I don't think I'm 60. I'll be 62. So I'll be 92 years old. If I make it. But um, this, this world where we are will not look anything like what it looks today in the next 30 years. So they, and, and what they do is the way they entice people to these areas. And we've all seen this. They'll have articles and say, 10 best places to work, 10 best places to buy a home, 10 yeah. best places with, for schooling, right? And so that's how they massage and manipulate the, the, the masses to, to get them to migrate to the areas and the places they want them to, to migrate to. Sure. And we can see with a big piece of Agenda 21 is to um, – is to live where you work, work where you live, right? It's going back yeah. to the um, to kind of the urban types of settings, you know. Now, this is not something that's going to happen like next week, but this mm -hmm. is something that's been in play, uh, you know, for, wow, I mean, since the 1990s, uh, I, I believe uh, Clinton uh, signed an executive order putting Agenda 21 into play. Yes, sir. In, in this country, you know, so... Um, you know, it's like we said before, it's it, it, it's so intertwined. It's so networked and people have a hard time with that. They're thinking, how could it possibly be, you know, this stitched together? But it is. It is. And yeah. that's because these people and you know, whoever they are at the upper echelon of the pyramid have been working this for a very, very long time. I mean, I'll read off some of the just real quickly here. Right. We have the yeah. Committee of 300. Yeah. We have uh, Tavistock Institute for Human Relations. We know Tavistock exists. I'm going to read off things that exist. The Royal Institute for International Affairs, which is, which is the entity coming out of the Committee of 300 that is responsible for what goes on in the United States. Mm -hmm. We have um, the Hudson Institute, MIT, Stanford. We have the Milner Group, Heritage Foundation, Brookings, RAND. You mentioned before... Um, uh, that we had the Council of Foreign Relations, Angelo, the Bilderbergs, mm -hmm. yeah. the Trilateral Commission, the National Security Council, the Club of Rome. I mean, we have MI6, the CIA, the FBI. It's just unbelievable. You have uh, yeah. you know, the media and, and and on and on and on. I mean, I have a, I have a whole list here. I have a whole list. There's but another that, organization, it, one that I belonged to for a while and removed myself from that group, Mensa. Okay. Okay. And uh, and I did so um, not at the behest of anyone, but at the strong suggestion that if I were not willing to comply, that perhaps it wasn't a place for me. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, have to, I you am, have to row in the same direction. I've, I've said this to my wife. I've said this to my family. They know. And guys that work with me every week, they know I am not a conformist. I'm not wired that way. I'm a free and critical thinker, even before the term existed. Thank you, Mike Williams, for that one. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I will tell you that there are a growing number of people that are waking up to this new reality. You know, we call it a conspiracy, but really it's a conspiracy of truth. And sometimes, you know, like bad medicine, the truth is a bitter pill to swallow. Go ahead, Go ahead Dan. Dan. Well, let let me ask then. As I know we're we're approaching the two hour mark, so um, let me let me kind of wrap it up with or and wrap my my, my <laughs> Well, I, I know we're gonna need like part forty seven just to to finish the page of notes you. Oh, just I'm showed getting us. Mike to come back. I got. But um, every major theory, be it. The, the, the Council of 300, the Illuminati, the deep state, every major theory, the government, this, this shadow, these shadow organizations, whether they be uh, something maybe grounded in more realism, uh, something grounded in the crazy, like the shape-shifting lizard aliens I joked about earlier, you know, everything is they control everything. They control the media. They control this. They control that. So if, if, if their hands are so permeated in everything, then, then – how are how is a show like yours allowed to exist? And I know you sit here and you say, "Oh, well, that was demonetized." I was, you know, 
if, if they can manipulate a virus and time a chokehold to some code, how come you haven't died in a car accident yet? Like, like you, you, the, these people, and, and it's something, and I'm not criticizing you. I, I'm trying to figure this out. These a lot of this alternative research that I keep seeing, they talk about the government can do anything and, and this 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 was this murder was covered up and this thing happened and this alien was was a secret and da 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 da. Yet yet this guy, you know, in your case uh, you know, with a show or somebody with a radio program or that 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 the the Hollywood image of the guy in his basement with all the pictures on the wall and the strings connecting everything, those people are allowed to continue broadcasting the truth without any kind of re of recourse how is how does that f factor in is is allowing your show to exist part of that how does you know it, it, how does how does that all play he in? is and facing it's, recourse they're demonetizing him well, yeah, they're pulling that, his they, videos his, his, his information is easily still found though if you're talking well, about a government they're censoring that can, the shit out of him are you kidding me you're, you're no, talking here, about no, a, 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 well, a secret Mike organization the question. it's a good that, question that can, that let Mike can, answer it what's that okay. let Mike answer the question I it's would because, like to hear Mike's answer yeah yeah no it, it is a good question and here's and here's the answer people like myself are allowed to continue to do well up to a certain level talk about the things we talk about because 99.9% .9 of the population is clueless and the controllers know that. Okay. So they're like, you know what, let Mike talk about the things he wants to talk about, except a couple of things where we don't want him to talk about and we'll give him a hard time and we'll deplatform him or, or demonetize him or we'll block his blog here or, you know, we'll cut his, his, uh, his uh, URL off on Facebook and we'll just basically jerk his chain a little bit. Right. At the end of the day, Dan, I have 21,600 subscribers on my YouTube channel, my main channel. Mm -hmm. It's a grain of sand on a very, very large beach. They don't care. They don't care. It's, they, they are in total control of this thing, and it's because people are complicit with the agenda. Now, Angelo said people are waking up. Well, they, there are people waking up. I like to say it's more of an awareness. People really don't start to wake up until something lands in their lap and winds up on their doorstep. That's when it becomes an issue for them. And that's when they're like, oh, what's going on here? All of a sudden, the light bulb goes off. But that's why myself and others are allowed to go do the things that we do. It's because, you know, it's a very, very minute sliver of the pie of the population. You know, when, when they've got the major media outlets, when they've got Hollywood, when they have the music industry, when they have your government, when they have your medical industry, when they have your insurance industry, when they have the pharmaceutical industry, who's Mike Williams? He's just a guy with 21,600 subscribers on YouTube. Fine. See, that's, that's what they do. And that's how it works. I'm telling you, it's, it's deep. It's really, really deep. And they like to pollute the waters, like we mentioned earlier, with all the nonsense conspiracies that are out there, people that just kind of want to People who just want their 15 minutes of fame, they don't really do conspiracy research. They just want views and they want to collect revenue, right? YouTube has become a job for them. YouTube's not a job for me. That's one of the, that's one of the things I think that, that benefits my work. I don't need money from YouTube. Even though I monetize my channel, it's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. I do it so that I can cover some of my costs. I have to buy software, get my computer fixed, that type of thing there. Yeah. But I don't rely... On, um, I don't rely on YouTube for my revenue stream, but there are people that do. And when you do, you are compromised because you have to start making certain adjustments and you have to start monitoring yourself and self-censoring yourself and self-policing yourself because if you don't, you're not going to have the paycheck coming in. Now, to my colleagues out there that are listening to me, I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying if you're honest and you take a step back, you know, you know that that's how it works. OK, so anyway, it's a good question, Dan. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, mow you over here with this stuff. It's I'm really glad we're doing this show because I'm getting asked questions that are, are questions that need to get asked. You know, when you hang around people who are like minded all the time, you know, you don't really get the kind of grassroots you, questions that we're getting here. It's the old the old saying, you, you never you never how did it go? How's it go? I'm paraphrasing. You never finish a thought if you only talk to people that tell you what you're already thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. No, this is excellent. 
I think Mike wants to say something, though, Mike. I, yeah, Mike, I feel bad. Yeah. Why don't we, I have uh, my list of questions, but, you know, uh, maybe another time we'll have you on, because I had a whole bunch of different things. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike. Why thing... don't we uh, get, like, uh, one or two more in from you, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll let Mike Williams go tonight. But, Mike, I w- I just let me hit you up now. I would love you to come back for a part two. Maybe we can further this discussion or talk about Paul, whatever you want to do. Whatever you guys want to talk about. If- I would love to talk about Paul. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I would love to be a part of that show, too. Yeah, okay. We could talk about uh, Paul McCartney. Because a- yep. I got two big, thick books over here that I read both cover to cover. And yep. uh, and let me just, while we're at it, let's just plug them. This is uh, Memoirs of Billy Shear. This is the uh, the red cover edition. First one. And this is the uh, blue cover, the 9 after 9 edition, um, the 9 after 909 edition. Right. <laughs> um, and interestingly enough, Mike Williams, you are mentioned in here, your, or your URL is anyway. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about that when we have you back, because that, that's a whole show, brother. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that was in there. And I, when I was reading the book, I saw the URL, and... Um, I'm looking at the URL. It's the URL is uh, James Paul McCartney. Got, yeah. Um, how I got it, it was open. It was available. I I sucked it up. I took it, and it points to my YouTube channel. And so when I was looking at the footnote on page 326, I think it is Angelo, right? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at it, and it didn't hit me right away. I'm like, well, that URL URL looks familiar. <laughs> like, yeah, because well, it's, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So very, very interesting. I, I would love to talk to the you know about the Beatles with you guys, and uh, we can get oh, down can to uh, what what was going on there, and uh, you know what it's yeah, all about. Because I've got some inside track on that stuff, brother. No, okay, no. yeah. I want to hear about Kenny Lane. Oh Mike, yeah, Mike, you have questions. I'm really sorry, bud. I know you. Yeah, well, uh, thanks, Mike. Um, Paul McCartney, um, given the story that's been told in in these different theories, uh, Paul, the original Paul, would have been killed on September 11th. Yeah. Or in the car accident that he was in was on September 11th, and then he would have died the morning of September 12th. That's that's right. I didn't even put that together. Sorry. So, exactly. So just another thing of uh, that 9-11. And uh, here's one for you, Mike, that you wouldn't be aware of. That the album by Paul McCartney and Wings, Band on the Run, yeah. uh, some sources say it was released on December 7th, 1973. Other sources say it was released on December 5th, 1973. December 5th happens to be the birthday of Walt Disney, happens to be the day of uh, repeal of the alcohol was reallowed in the country for the masses, mm-hmm. and it happens to be my birthday. So what does that mean, Mike? I think that Billy probably was celebrating your birthday. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> with Walt, with Walt watching Fantasia, right? It all while makes sense now. <laughs> well, I just I found it because because yeah, everyone's right. centered around their own birthday. Those things that have happened on my birthday, including the Band on the Run mm. album, which is excellent, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just kind of one of those cosmic coincidences, or maybe there's more to it, but. I find a lot of what your stuff is doing, Mike, very fascinating. Um, I find that the, the the Paul is Dead, it's interesting that you have two different channels now because the Paul is Dead is like its own world. It does overlap with this stuff. Oh, boy. But it, it, it really is that you put so much work into this. People like Vince Russo, people like Angelo are taking a real interest, and that's that's a credit to you as a – uh, I don't know what you call yourself, an alternate researcher, historian, journalist, video journalist, philosopher. But I give you a lot of credit for taking on these uh, big topics in a serious way. And uh, I do I do want to say, though, real quick, on some of these rock and roll people, Kurt Cobain, Rivers Cuomo, I think the reason why some people approach you in particular with what they're thinking or what they've seen online is because they attach the rock and roll world to Paul is dead. So they're wondering if that's keeping up with that legacy or that tradition or that type of, you well, know, Mike Messier, we, we haven't even touched the 27 club yet. Well, yeah, that's I think another, that, that's we're going to have to have Mike on again, because 
we're going on two oh, hours. It's just to. so much information. But I, I, for all three of us, I'd say, Mike, man, you're a great guest and really appreciate oh your God, hard work. Stuff. Oh, yeah. No, you know, thank you, guys. Thank you. In the interest of full disclosure, I contacted Mike Williams a year ago. Mm. Um, and here's what happened. Kind of my bad. Uh, I lifted a video that Mike had with Vince Russo. I, I enjoyed it so much I wanted to share it. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that I was violating a copyright. So I, you know, Mike said, Would, can you please remove that? I went, absolutely. And I did. And, uh, and at the time I said, Mike, I've taken down that video off of my, uh, my YouTube page. But you're a guy that, that wants to know me. Trust me. <laughs> well, let me I, let me ex- let me just explain, Angelo, because uh, sometimes people will ask me why I don't allow re-uploads of my shows, and especially with the the McCartney and Beatles stuff, I'll, I'll explain why. Sure. It is a very very toxic topic, oh, and boy. it is and it is extremely toxic within the quote unquote Paul is dead community itself. Okay, and I have really stirred the pot in a big way. And uh, I have uh, upset the apple cart for other researchers who are looking into this, who sat with a narrative for a very long time and were content with it. And then all of a sudden, Mike comes along and says, you know what? Um, here's my research and here's how I think things went down. And so, um, so the reason why I do that, Angelo, is because, you know, you really don't know who you're dealing with. And a lot of times what people will do is they will take your content and they will edit it, and then they will take it out of context, right? And so I I protect it like you wouldn't believe. In fact, Sage Equay is trademarked for that reason. Absolutely. Um, To be able to protect things because, uh, I mean, I don't really like going down that road, to be honest with you, but there are so many people out there that just won't do the right thing, and they have, they they, they will just uh, take your content and... You know, and and take it and take it out of context, and I just don't want to deal with it. To be perfectly honest with you, you know, I want to. Well, if it's, any, be if in, it's in, any consolation, I will tell you that uh, I know how you feel now. Literally, I know how you feel. Uh, I have, in the interest of full disclosure, two YouTube channels. One is my Psychic Angelo YouTube channel. The other is Wrestling with the Future. Both are trademarked. Uh, both have disclaimers and uh, and you know of copyright infringement on them, uh, including the Copyright Act of 1976. Um, I have Michael Jackson videos up on my psychic page. Okay. Uh, that I created uh, the Michael Jackson hoax, and I had someone literally put my video on their Vimeo page as their video, so I had to. You know, I had to, to to strike out, you know, with a copyright infringement on both YouTube and Vimeo. Right. So I do know literally how you feel. And uh, I get the chance now to tell you person to person. I'm sorry for doing that. In my bad. Oh, don't worry about it. I, I, like I said, you, I just don't you don't know. Like when you, I didn't know you, I didn't know. Uh, you just don't know. And so you, you yeah. have to be very vigilant. Otherwise, you know, like I said, there are people out there that will not think twice about doing negative stuff. Right. And and in trying to undermine your work and you put all this work and effort into your research. Exactly. And you've got some you've got some clown out there that wants to, you know, think they're going to uh you know take it apart and or like I said, undermine you. And I just I have to be very protective of it. You know, I do want to say, no, Dan wants to say something here, but Angelo, I would love to have you on my show to talk about your remote viewing and your psychic abilities. I would absolutely Welcome that, and uh, and thank you for the invite. I that would, appreciate that would be it. fantastic. I would love to have somebody who was in the remote viewing. Yeah, absolutely, well, excellent. That's what I do, that's what I, I, think, I do. I think Dan had. Did you? Well, I was yeah. actually just going to ask as kind of a final parting thought because you had just mentioned that you had it copyrighted. Something I haven't learned in watching your shows. What does the name Sage Equay come from? Like, like what? What does that mean? <laughs> Okay, that's so, a very good question. Yeah, that All was right. on my list that's of questions good, too. Number one, good job. Okay, <laughs> okay. it's it's actually it's great question. There's, Dan. there's there's nothing like really intellectual about it. It's, 
what happened was I got into research, you know, a long time ago, looking at this stuff. And, you know, so my family would kid around with me and they would say, oh, Sage, you know, Mike's, Mike's the Sage, you know, but it mm -hmm. was, you know, but it's not like your family giving you reverence. It's your family poking you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and then the, the town I live in, in, uh, in North Carolina has the word Quay in it, Q-U-A-Y. So I just said, you know, Sage of Quay. And to be honest, I, I really didn't even like the name to begin with. Um, I was kind of like on the fence with it. It was just something that stuck. And it just has stuck with me now for years. And, it's catchy. Uh, I like it. You like it, really? I don't yeah, know. You know no, it's do. funny. Yeah, that's that's the story behind it. And, um, it's you know, I'm I, calling yourself the Sage of New Hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Quay is something has something to do with stones or something and, uh, and and somebody said to me you know what does it have to do with you know what do you do with stones and i get emails like that i'm like i don't, I don't really do anything with stones <laughs> well mike <laughs> messier actually asked me one night uh in fact it was after one of our wrestling shows mike says to me do you pronounce this quay or quay i said it's quay the sage of quay yeah yeah was, the sage of quay. i want to say quay <laughs> well don't it's quay quay yeah <laughs> that's funny it's Q W A Y. Think of it that if it, way. If it yeah. gets people to ask, then they are in curiosity has been tweaked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. it's yeah. it does sound to me very uh existential new age type of store or something. So I think it's cool, but I, I did spend a couple of years in North Carolina. It's a great state. Thank and you. uh you know, I do have a uh, North Carolina short film category in Avalonia Festival, as well as a thought crime category in Avalonia Festival because of the book. I believe it's uh, 1984, uh, George Orwell, correct? George Orwell, yeah. We, yeah. we almost got through a whole show, Angelo, almost. I know, I know. <laughs> Mike, it's an inside thing. Mike Messier, <laughs> God bless him, is a shameless self-promoter. It's okay, Mike. Who else if is going to do it, right? That's right. Hey, I, I, I felt so oppressed because my seven questions and I Mike, throughout literally, the, the show. Literally, Mike, his <laughs> website says, if my name were a website, it would be MikeMessier.com. <laughs> it's my email signature. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I, I'll tell you what, Mikey. Yeah, we're, we got to bring, uh, we got to bring Mike Wiggins back. Dan, yeah, what do you absolutely. think? I'll, I'll, I'll fax you these questions, Mike. Okay, just, well, you know what? Paper, Mike, fax it to me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I'll tell you what. That that was a fast two hours, brother. I'll tell you what. And we're just, we were just getting warmed up. No, it was a lot I wanna, of fun. I want to really thank was. you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. You've been so generous with your time, as you are with everybody. If, and if anybody watches uh, Mike Williams' Sage of Quay, on uh, on YouTube, the Sage of Quay Radio Hour, and I think you have a couple of them. You have a, a one and two, right? One's a backup. Okay. Yeah, Sage of Quay and, and Sage of Quay Radio Two is my backup channel in case yeah. YouTube blows up my my main channel. <laughs> and so, and you also have the uh, uh, the Mike Williams Paul is Dead channel. Yep. And uh, and so I'm and I spend a lot of time there, a lot. <laughs> um, you are generous with your time to a fault. I mean, I, I will tell you that if anybody listens to your uh, presentations and watches your videos, you put some hours into this stuff. And, and, and I thank you on behalf of the masses for doing that. Um, it enlightens so many more people who would not have that knowledge. And I appreciate it from a personal and professional level. I know uh, Mike Messier does. Dan is still on the fence with it, but we'll 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 bring him over. No, Dan asks great questions. Really, Dan, you yeah. did. I, I was well, glad I got to ask those questions. Really, I uh, I appreciate yeah. you talking to me. A lot of a lot of times when you're a counterpoint like I am, it tends to get combative, and it was very respectful. I appreciate that. No, I, I I'm never disrespectful to people. It's just you know, look, no, never. I you know I I, I was in a place one time where, you know, I, I didn't believe the stuff I talk about today, you know, so I understand the, the progression, you know, and so yeah. no problem, no worries. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, um, it was a great show and very informative. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for doing this. Uh, we will have you back again very soon. Uh, for Mike Messier, 
Go ahead and plug yourself, brother. MikeMessier.com, AvaloniaFestival.com. And uh, please subscribe to the Wrestling with the Future YouTube channel if you're seeing us on this video for the first time. And you can check out the Mike Messier YouTube channel and, of course, the Sage of Kwai YouTube channel as well. Quay. Quay. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Dan the man. Well, for uh, Wrestling with the Future, we're on YouTube, like Mike said. We're also on Facebook. We have a private Facebook group, Wrestling with the Future podcast. Wrestling with the Future is on Twitter at Wrestling Future. That's no G, Wrestling Future. I'm on Twitter, the man underscore WWTF. For those watching, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Buy the T-shirt. And uh, keep, us, uh, keep, keep our numbers growing. We'll get Mike Williams a Wrestling with the Future T-shirt out to him. I'd appreciate that, Angelo. <laughs> yeah, we'll take care of you. Would you like an extra yeah. large? Yeah, extra large is great. You got it. Okay, yeah. cool. And for myself, Psychic Medium Angelo, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter at Psychic Angelo. Of course, our Wrestling with the Future page, as Dan mentioned, uh, we're everywhere. Not hard to find. Uh, you can find me if you if you want a reading. Reach me on Twitter at Psychic Angelo. And I will, of course, I never charge for my readings. Uh, I do to I do take donations. If you if you donate, that's fine. If you don't, that's okay too. You're still going to get uh, uh, many hours worth of readings. Um, I'm in fact, Mike, my longest reading was eight and a half hours. Mm. Wow. In one sitting. Good Lord. In one sitting. I never asked a single question, and thankfully it was recorded. Um, but, uh, if you want to, uh, if you do want a reading, uh, seriously, uh, just reach me on Facebook, uh, either at our wrestling page or psychic Angelo, and uh, I will take care of you for Mike Messier for Dan, the man, and especially for Mike Williams from Sage of Quay. Good night, everybody. Happy wrestling. We'll see you next time. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.